Number four, we're going to go into memory lane. Memory Lee. nostalgia. Bit of nostalgia um, because obviously my era, your era, yeah. coming through at Highbury, a lot of it's long forgotten. There's certain people who actually watch this show who have never been to Highbury don't even realise what Highbury was about. So, Lee, you're going to take me through. Well, I'm going to take you through some photos. Some which photos. Is, you know, which we've had a few people come in and ask so, um, about, about the Highbury days and things like that. So the first one we're going to look at is this one. Uh, you and Ian Wright. Yes. Now, a lot of people have been saying um, what was the relationship like, um, what, what was Ian Wright like. He had a great... The celebrations, by the way, someone asked that as well. Did you plan him in training or was it just things that happened because no, they were great? Do you know the funny thing about um, the relationship with Ian Wright? Anytime we used to play Palace, when Wrighty was at Palace, anytime we used to go and play Palace, Andy Gray, who was at Palace, you remember the midfielder, yeah, yeah, Andy Gray? Yeah. Andy Gray used to look mentor me. He's, he's, he used to live around the corner from me when I was cu coming up. And I was pals with his brother, Nicky. So Andy was the first kind of one from Brixton who actually was starting to make it through into the pros. Right. So we always used to follow Andy. So here I am now at Arsenal. You got Andy, you got um, Wrighty from South London. You had John Solarco, you had Mark Bright. You know, so there was, there was a, a South London theme. Paul Davis, Michael Thomas, Rocky, myself, you know, all of us are South London. So we had that, we always used to talk before the game and we used to give them a slap. Yeah. <laughs> we used to slap them. So we always used to say to Wright, right, you're on the wrong side, man. You need to come to Arsenal. And obviously a few years later, he did. He came to Arsenal, to the detriment of my bloody spot. Yeah, yeah. But it, was, it wasn't about Kevin Campbell, it was about Arsenal and it was about getting the best players in the building. That was the key. And we had, a, we had an affinity from, from day one, myself and Wrighty. But Wrighty used to room with Rocky at the time. Obviously, you, you move on a few years and uh, Rocky left uh, and stuff like that. Me and Ian Wright then started to, move to, uh, started to room together, um, started to play together. And that, that bond started to build really, really strong. And, you know, you kind of... You know, the old partnerships, because it was too up top. Yeah, always You, too you up can then, yeah. build a partnership and a friendship based on how you play. And that's what that was. And that was all righty and his, his energy. He was such an energetic uh, player and such an energetic character that it was just so easy to, to warm to him. And, you know, this... This personifies what it was. It, it's a bit cheeky. It's yeah, a bit yeah, fun. It's, it's and all the dances, were, they were like dance hall. It was like reggae dances, what we used to do and stuff like that. Some of them were, were, were pre-done. Some of them weren't pre-done. We just used to do it off the off fly. The cuff, yeah, so, yeah. And I think a lot of the Arsenal fans really like that because, you know, they talk about celebration now. We were the first. Yeah, yeah, we were the first exactly. to really do it and make it quite prominent. So I know a lot of Arsenal fans out there used to love the dances and the, and, and the, and the celebrations because we used to score a lot of goals. Yeah, exactly. That's what it was, and that's what it was all about, enjoying the celebrations. It was all and, about you know, enjoyment. And you'd all see something there. Do you feel there's a little, when you see Lacazette and Aubameyang now, you, was that the same sort of relationship? Do well, you see that? Yeah, I, 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 do you know what I see? I see two players who get along. I see two players who have an energy and affinity with each other. And I, I've been crying out for it. It's not going to happen, but I'd love to see them, them as a front two. Yeah, it's just cha football's changed that. Football's changed, but you know what? I'd love to see them as a front two and see how we do. Yeah. Excuse me, because I, I, I truly believe we're not getting the best out of both. At times we're getting the best out of one, but not the other. One suffering. Yeah. And I think Lacazette's suffering. Great that he scored on Sunday. I'm so pleased that he scored on Sunday. You know, because that gives him a lift. That hopefully that will get him going again. But there's nothing better than having a front two who have an affinity and a connection together. Believe me, it's special. Good kit as well, that one. Yeah, it like was that a kit? really good kit. Like yeah, it was a good kit. It was a good kit. What's next, Lee? What's, What's next? So we'll go for... I, I think we're going to go for uh, for this... Uh, well, have just a little bit of a talk oh, about, yes. about this man. George Graham. George Graham. He was... Well, that is a, quite an iconic picture. Obviously, that this is Anfield sign. 89. You know, and it's 89. And there's George after the SAS, smash and grab, went into Anfield. <laughs> Never been beat 2-0 for probably donkey's years. 
Arsenal go in there on a Friday night, all the chips in the middle of the table, and go and take it 2-0. Obviously, Alan Smith scores the first. Michael Thomas scores what is obviously legendary, yeah. legendary status at Arsenal. And there, that picture shows George Graham. The cat has got the cream. Look at him with, yeah. that, with that title. That's what he set out to do, Dude. and he'd done it. Looking smart as ever, and he's taking it back to the dressing room to go and celebrate with the boys. The, the, from a fan's point of view, like, do you remember like the game Wimbledon two two on the in the midweek? Yeah, before on the, that? yeah. Tuesday, I think we Wednesday. played on a Tuesday or Wednesday, and we drew two two and was a little bit annoyed. And then Liverpool were playing West Ham, uh, West Ham the next day and smashed them. And smashed them, and he's like, oh no, don't score another goal, don't score another goal. And then it was on the Friday the game. I didn't go to the game. I I, I had a Watch, chance to game, but yeah. I didn't go. Thinking it was Many all people over. thought it was. Yeah, yeah, I'll were you one of them who wrote us off? I didn't. I, yeah, I was. I was. I, 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 it was really hard, you know, like to get up folding wise and things like yeah. that, you know. Uh, Steve went up there, my mate Steve, you know, and he's always got that over us that he went, like, you know, and, and I didn't go, but still a great day because from from then. From we was all around my house watching it. We all piled down to Ivory right. afterwards. It was a fantastic, fantastic. Chaos. Event. It so was chaos. It was chaos. So we got we, we did get we did get some of it um, going on there. And the great thing for me about George Graham and why I've got a, a lot of affection for him as a fan from when I first started supporting Arsenal, mm. I, I never ever dreamed that we could ever win the league. We yeah. was like, mid t not mid-table, but up there, but you had the Liverpools, yeah. Aston Villas, we're winning, not Forest. A lot of strong teams. So, lots top, of strong top teams, teams. Yeah. and we wasn't ever really looking like winning the top, cup finals and things like that. And then he come along, and obviously we won, he, he, he wound me up by getting rid of Charlie Nicholas. So he had to win me over. No, not, not to start with. Uh, don't forget, no, don't Charlie get... Nicholas won him, helped him win his first trophy. And set us on the right path. Set us on the right path because exactly. you need a bit of progress. Yeah. And Charlie scored. Well, Ian Russ scored for Liverpool. Yeah. And Charlie got got a couple, didn't he? Yeah. The and Little Woods Cup. The Little Woods Cup, and that was our first trophy under George Graham. And I think that helped the belief. Yeah, push us, push us through like. From the first day George Graham came into the building, Liverpool were the target. Because they, the way they are now, that's how they, they were. were. They yeah. were all in cup, they, they, they'd beat everybody. But he came in and said, right, that team in, on Merseyside, the red team, that's who we're, that's who we're going for. And I'm, we're not going to stop until we get them. So, you know, those, those years, what was it? He came in 86, so that was like three years down the line. Yeah. This is the culmination of that drive of the team. And I was sat in with most of us, I think me, Paul Davis, Quinny, um, uh, was it Perry Groves or? The, the, no, Groves the, you played. You the, the, there was, sorry, there was most of us who traveled up, Dave William, Alan Miller, all yeah. those guys. We were actually in the um, away end. We were in with the away fans and with five minutes to go, we made our way down right by the, the dugouts. And then obviously, the legendary, you know, yeah. Luke Kitch to Dixon, Dixon to Smith, Smith, you know. Also piling forward. Thomas is up for grabs now. That moment comes and we all go nuts on the side. But this is behind closed doors. This is the stuff you don't see. You don't see, you know, the, that great Liverpool staff bringing the champagne in. Yeah. Which was their champagne. And, you know, listen, I, I have plenty of banter with Red Nose and, 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 and Liverpool fans. But the club are class. They are absolutely class. The way they handled themselves that day made me think. Now I, I now I realise why they're so, so successful. Close, yeah. So successful because they've got that mentality. They said they don't deserve no champagne here, guys. You come here, you beat us two 0 you deserve it. And boy, did we have some champagne! Yeah, that fantastic, night. Line, you know. So he's, he's the man, George. Of course, he brought all you guys together, and I think this is. I, I'm gonna. I love this photo. I, I love this photo, and it's for all that. I think that's iconic, you know. Um, to me, Paul Davis. I'm going to talk about him first. Paul got a little bit of stick when he first came in at, at, at the Arsenal. He did. You know what I mean? But had yeah. the, the um, tenacity, tenacity to, to and win determination. the fans, and he won the fans over. If you, you know, any fan from my generation and all that will, will talk very, very fondly about Paul yeah. Davis, and you know, all the South London boys there all made an impact. All got championship medals there. Yeah. Like, you know. what, what, what do you see when you look at that photo? I see family. That's what I see. I see family. Pops, obviously, we call Pops because he's the old, eldest member of, of the, the South London crew. 
Um, just looking at Rocky Smile, um, you know, such, such special guys. Michael Thomas went to the same school as Michael Thomas. I was younger, but Mickey Thomas was, you know, someone I looked up to in school, you know, when he was going through the first, um, I think it was first Black England captain, schoolboys, and all that kind of thing. And then he went on to, obviously, to Arsenal. I knew at that time I was going to Arsenal, so I was always watching, looking out for what Mickey Thomas done and used to come and watch Rocky. And that, to me, was my mentoring system right there. These guys mentored me incredibly. Told me the right things to do, what not to do, you know, living the life, living the life properly, etc., etc., etc. Being a, a good teammate. They, they taught me so much about Arsenal and they taught me so much about being professional and, 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 and doing things the right way. This was this really was my my mentoring system at Arsenal right there. You can obviously you can chuck Tony Adams in and David yeah, O'Leary in. Yeah. But just from this picture alone from the South London element, that connection of brothers, these three were so special to me and obviously Rocky just means so yeah, much. Yeah, we're so just gonna go and set one now because this is a it's I think the, the most iconic kit that Arsenal have ever produced. Ever, ever had. Especially ever as had. an away kit. As an away kit. I, I'm going to be honest, I never liked it at first. It, it was one of those ones that grew on you. Do you know what, Lee? I've got to say this. A lot of people never liked it at the start. Yeah, I was one of because them. Because it kind of went away from the tradition of, of what Arsenal... Arsenal used to just have the, the colour... Yeah, didn't they yeah, just yeah. used to have the colour and the different shorts and the socks would, would, would be... And that was it. But this... I think it, this w helped Arsenal move into modern day football because the shorts were different, the socks were different, but this top that, you know, as they call it, the bruised banana, was at first people were like, nah, I'm not having that. No, nah, oh, maybe being one of them. Yeah, I'm not having that. And then as the team performed in it, I think that's the key yeah. as well. The team actually really performed in this kit. So I think it kind of wins over the, the hearts and minds of the yeah, fans. Yeah, it does. Because I. Like I don't think it, it was always yellow and blue. I always loved the yellow and blue. I, going, I think growing up in the FA Cup finals in the 70s, it was, we, we played like in the yellow, yellow and blue. And yeah. it, just, it, was, it was iconic. I don't know if you remember, I think 80, 81, 82, they brought out the green kit, yes. which I didn't like at first, but then. Green I, and blue. Do you remember it? Green, green, green blue. and blue. It, yeah. it, it was only for one year, but we weren't a very good side no. that year. <laughs> so it never really got the, the, the shelf life it deserved. And then, but we went back to the yellow and blue, and of course, the great, you know, Anfield 89, and yes. that yellow, great. Yes. And then they brought this one out, and it, and it grew on you. And there's no, no two ways about that. And that's a great photo. Of but the photo, obviously, with the, the, the main guy, Rocky, who, you know, passed away, obviously, it's still sad for, yeah. for Arsenal fans. We still feel it for Arsenal fans. And that was kind of the partnership where me and Wrighty, um, you know, wore the kit and took off. and. Yeah, I've, I've I've had the pleasure of meeting yourself, obviously, right here as well. Yeah. I, I've never never had the the fortune pleasure, to, your pleasure, pleasure to of, meet of, of meeting Rocky. Rocky, yeah, yeah. But he was a special guy, Lee. Yeah, listen, you would have loved him. You yeah, would have loved yeah. him because he would have he would have the first thing when he greets you would have said, "All right, Lee, yeah. how you doing?" You do, people were like, you would have <laughs> yeah. been gobsmacked because it's Rocky. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? But he greeted everyone. He was such a special guy. Uh, but that this photo means a lot to me and a, a lot of gooners. Do you know, do you know looking, looking at Rocky there, and I, you know, like the best day I ever had as an Arsenal, people always ask me, what's the best game you've ever been to? Like, yeah. I, obviously, I missed out on 89, yeah. but 87 uh, at White Hart Lane when yeah. he gets the winner. Oh, and, like, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and you beat me again because you was on the pitch. You're like, you know, <laughs> so we won't go into that. But he, he never went over the top with, with his celebrations. He was just quality, wasn't he? When he do you know class, what I mean? Like, class act. A class act. You know, he was I mean? a class just, all the way yeah. through. Yeah, listen, because, you know, Rocky was one of the realists. He was like, you know, we haven't won anything yet. We let's we want to win. Yeah. And, and that's what George Graham helped breed. He knew he had youngsters like Rocky, Tony Adams, Michael Thomas, all the boys coming through, Merce, Quinny, Martin A. They were all coming through, wanted to win, desperate to win. So we had to harness that, and he harnessed that, you know. And uh, uh, I've got to say, Theo Foley was superb in the way he dovetailed yeah, with George. Fella. Yeah, lovely, lovely fellow. Lovely fellow, because Theo, Philo, Theo always used to get Rocky. And they used to play music, and Theo, Rocky used to get Theo dancing. Theo had two left feet, by the way. <laughs> but Theo used to have a go at it, you know, and and he was he was really he was really good, and they had such a fantastic connection. 
uh, Theo and Rocky. I also think David O'Leary's got a... He doesn't get the, the credit, the, the he, credit deserves. he deserves. David O'Leary... Listen, David O'Leary, for, for years, used to pick me up and look after me and advise me and do all kinds of things. David O'Leary was a stalwart of that dressing room because he was really the older statesman, yeah. wasn't he? You know, he was the older statesman of, of that of that team. And he was fantastic with a, with a lot of us, um, David O'Leary. So, you know, this this brings back so many memories. Fan, fantastic memories. I've got a couple, one of me now, like, yeah? So, Go on, like, let's, so let's... We're going to put this one up there because, again, this is a bit of nostalgia. Yeah. Right, so, like, we'll put this one up here, like, you know. Uh, yeah, hey uh, man, uh, wow! Uh, hey, by the way, love the kit. Yeah, love the kit, and look at all the trophies. Yeah, because that's what obviously Barclays uh, Premier League then wasn't it? This is this is in '91. Sorry, so Barclays Football League it yeah. was. So you got the Football League trophy, you got the Barclays trophy. Yeah. And what trophy is that? Is it the Makita or something? Yeah, the Makita trophy. Yeah, it was the Makita trophy. Like yeah, that. Was the Makita trophy. Like yeah, it's a pre-season trophy, but, but it's winning. Yeah. You're on the North Bank, is it? It's in the North Bank. And this is what I'm saying. Like, they, these are the things that we used to do as fans. Yeah. We won the league. Obviously, you. this is the, the league, the, the year that you won it. And you used to... Uh, what, 703 or whatever. It won't got or the glasses or on. 709. Is it? But anyway, you used to queue up and you have to wait to go in and you, you go into the North Bank and you have the, the old photographer would take the photo and then you go and collect your photo. Uh, you know, like, they, we don't do things like that. They I mean, should. You get around, you know, like you, the, the players were lifting that trophy up against Man United in the uh, uh, hybrid. That, that hybrid at midweek, yeah. The following week or the week after. You, there you yeah, are taking was, pictures having, with having it. Having a photo with it. And it's a fantastic um, trophy as well. Oh, yeah. You know what That's I mean? That's iconic. Yeah, iconic, That yeah. is an iconic trophy. I mean, I think the, the, the Barclays um, trophy is iconic as well because that's when really that was... Barclays came in in a big way, didn't they? Barclays came in to... to to sponsor the league yeah. and they had their own trophy for the champions and that was it so not only did you win one you won well, the two, other yeah, one so it was, one, yeah. it was it was two trophies but look, you're looking well mate. I'm looking, looking right there like, you know, you're listen, looking well well listen because we, we was winning games then like, now, since, happy so now, now that we lose games this is yeah, what so, happens so you're blaming so that for losing it yeah, uh, exactly but like, what a great season that was 91 I think people don't really give that credit credit yeah for what it was one game we lost that season one game at Chelsea we lost that year and I think um, they, Steve Bold went off injured and David Hillier went to centre half. half. Had to go centre half, and we only lost it two one. Where we, I think we equalised. It was one each for a bit, and then they scored, and we just couldn't peg them back. But we would have went unbeaten that season. Yeah, and I thought you know. I, also, Tony Adams had a little uh, yes, little bit of a holiday, L- didn't he? A, little bit of a holiday in uh, in HMP. Yeah. Yes, he Chelmsford. did. Chelmsford. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, we saw that through. Yeah. You know, lads had to come up and step up when he wasn't wasn't there, and David O'Leary and the likes. You know, they done m- marvelous without Tony. And, and of course, Old Trafford. There was the, the, uh, battle, the, battle, the battle, of Old battle of Old Trafford. Now there, there was a video after that with George. I've got to ask you this question: Was George Graham done a speech and the cameras were there and we got at the training ground at Colby. Was that, did, was that all planned or was that all like all you all sat no, down? No, no, it was. was uh, I think that was really to show the fans. It was for the fans that, you know, yeah, we've been reprimanded, but we are a team who we're going to fight fire with fire. I think that's the key. You heard him, it, the narrative in that, in that video say, you know, we go up north and the fans are, are, are against us and the teams are against us. And, you know, we're, we have to battle everybody. Yeah. So we can't afford to go up there and be, you know, shrinking violets. We've got to go up there and fight fire with fire. And yeah, we've been dot points. And, you know, he said, he obviously, he doesn't want it to go into that scale. But we have to stand up for ourselves. You know, we have to make sure we bring our 12th man involved in the game. Because if you go up north, it's going to be... The, everyone's against you. Yeah. And I mean everybody. You're going to battle referees. You're going to battle teams. You're going to battle the fans. You're going to battle the tea lady. You're going to battle everybody. So he just was reiterating that point to us that he wants us aggressive. He wants us to, wants to keep us focused on winning this league because he was desperate to win it again. Yeah, brilliant, like, you know. And of course, ironically, the Man United like acts give you a guard of honour. Guard of honour. Like, oh, yeah, they, they, they made sure we got points <laughs> taken off us and to give us a guard of honour. So that right. was nice. So there you go, like you know what I mean. So, uh... but Lee, I've got a little folder. Oh, have you? I want to show you right. because huh. Huh. we talk about you and you, you're, you're obviously you're you're famous and infamous. 
Wow, wow, I've done about that. But. Being on AFTV and, and, and doing p bits for, for your look. But I just want to show some of the fans this picture because... <laughs> I mean... Bang out of order. Campbell, Lee, you're Lee, bang out of order. Lee, like that, I, I'll be honest with you. God, dear. I never knew you had no. so much hair, Well, this mate. is it, like, you know. So they, they give us a bit of the old slagging off about the hair and all that, don't they, like, you know? So was that your Charlie Nichols That was the Charlie... That was the time when Charlie... <laughs> that, so that's probably, you know, 80s... How old 87, were you? 87... Well... 19, 18, 19 at the time. Brilliant. And, I, listen, I was not the only one that was... Sporting like, that, that yeah. was, It was the perm at the back and, like, the long <laughs> front of the back, like, you know. And, you know, every... Listen, Charlie Nicholas to me, he, he changed Arsenal as far as I'm concerned from being like, when he come along, he he, um, he give us something. We, he had iconic status, yeah, didn't he? Yeah, we was, we was in the doldrums a little bit. Yes. Everybody wanted Charlie Nicholas at the time. Um, Man United, uh, Liverpool, Vigas, Liverpool, everyone. But he come to Arsenal and it just, you know. To capture him was amazing, it, it was, wasn't it? it? Was because if you remember those, like, people, want, you know, uh, the, the, that are um, a little bit younger and all that. We used to get about 22, 23,000 at Highbury, yes. which wasn't great, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, and then like the big teams would come, we'd be in a forward. Yeah. We played Luton, uh, opening game of the season that year, uh, and it was a packed out, 55,000 because of Charlie, Charlie Nicholas. Nicholas. Because he signed for us, and yeah, we had the air styles, you know what I mean? Leather trousers and white um, shoes. White and shoes, things. love it, Lee, I love it. I, I so, need a picture. So we, yeah, so we had all of that, like. You I know need right? a picture. So, um, th there you go, like. Right. Anyway, what we're talking about that, right? Somebody um, in in the family um, said because um, I asked for like, what about, you know, what Kevin like in his in his younger days, and you know what I mean. So like, yeah. So uh, I got this one come up, like, you know what I mean. Oh, show yeah, me, no, go on. Let's so, have like, a look. You know, so let's have a look. Here we go, this one here, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin with air, like, you know what I mean? The Afro, Lee, with the Lee, Afro. Lee, how did you get hold of this? Well, like, you know, family connections now, like, Kev, you know what I mean? So. Lee, Kev with an Afro, Kev mate. With, yeah. And I, I told you is I had that, an is, Afro. Is, is that Crystal Palace? No, it's not Crystal Palace. This is actually the Henry Thornton school kit. I used to go to Henry Thornton school. Michael Thomas went there as well. Clapton Common, it was. And this was our, our kit with the, the, the two stripes going across the chest. And this was our, um, it was the Metropolitan Police uh, Six Aside competition for the school. And Gary Randall and all these guys, Sean Stevens, Mark Calvert. We had a great team. And we won it, we won it twice and we got to the final once. So out of, in a, it was in a four year span, we won it twice so and got to the final. Bomb. So we were we were a good good side. School team was a good eleven aside, but at six aside or five aside we were we yeah, were good as well. well. But hey, I can't believe yeah. you got older. Did that. you have one of those little little forky things to What you mean the Afro comb? Yeah. Of course yeah, 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 that yeah, was standard. Like that, you know? I'm sure well, I couldn't play with it in. I was just checking <laughs> to see if the fist because it used to be the one with the metal teeth and the fist. Oh, yeah, the yeah, power yeah, fist, yeah, you know, yeah, the power yeah. fist. So, yeah, I used to, listen, I'm loving that. I don't know how you got hold of it, but I'm loving that, Lee. Oh, that's cool, isn't Jen, it? I was, I was probably about 13 in that 13. picture. With the afro, man. Yeah, Look at me, yeah, afro. Yeah. Hey, I might grow an afro again. Yeah, well, I might grow another afro, man. You, well, I've I, I got no chance. I might grow another afro. <laughs> no, I don't think I could do it now, but, Lee, that's quality, That's that. quality, like, That's yeah, quality. So that's a little bit of the old nostalgia. So um, why don't one, one why more but one more on the nostalgia we've got go because on. all this this thing's about social media and all that like, yeah. you know so the social media for us back uh, then back th back in the day was like you could actually phone up the club do you remember that like, yes. and you get a, yeah. a, a duck, Arsenal of one one nil yes. like, something like yeah. that like, that was one way of doing it if you couldn't go to the games of that and this was another way this Talk was about a, that. yeah this was the Guna was. The match day equivalent of Twitter, Instagram, and everything because fans used to say their piece in this. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And everyone used to buy it and you could read it. Obviously, you had the program, but these things were so important because you got an idea of what fans were feeling. Yeah. You, had, you know, players used to get it because yeah. it was. Oh, that's what I was going to ask you. The players. Yeah, so the players used to get it because it was interesting for us. So, so listen. So again, 
You know, on social media, yeah, people talk about where players, you know, players shouldn't be on social media. Back then, players used to read so, it. So, right now, because you used to go like, you go, get your goon out. Yeah, get, get your goon out and all that. Goon. I mean, it, just that. Oh, just, so the players would pick that up and everyone would, would read like, it, of course. Campbell's they would. had a shocker and it would yeah, be in yeah, there, right? Yeah, you know I mean? so, by Lee Judges, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that like, was in it, or by a Princess Goona, Amanda. She's hammered me quite a few times. But that, that's what, it's all part and parcel, Lee. So it was there in a day, but so in a different format. it was there in a different format. Again, to play for Arsenal, you have to have that thick skin. You have to. Because when you're playing well, it's the best. But when you're not playing so well, flak's going to be flying around. But you've got to be able to take it. And this was the social media of yesteryear. Yeah, the old Twitter of yesteryear. Brilliant, no, no, no. brilliant. brilliant. This no, no. was, and just check. We're going to win the Football, football League, League again, again. issue. Oh, yeah, How fantastic right. was that? And we but, did. Yeah, there you go. Like that, so that's the nostalgia stuff done. Like. Nostalgia, nostalgia done. Well, we hope you enjoyed that anyway. Yeah, like, we like, hope like, you like. enjoyed it. We're going to get to number five now, which is some of your questions. So let's, let's look at uh, some of the questions here, Lee. Um, if the club were to... This is by... Alonso Steinbeck, uh, thanks for the question. If the club were to commission a statue to a player, who is deserving to get one? And it's only one. Only one. For me, there's only one player. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, you know, and it would have to be Rocky. Yeah. You know, because of, of what he's done, what he achieved, and, and I just think that he is an iconic player yeah. for Arsenal. Who got taken too soon? Too soon. They got yeah. taken too and, soon. And I, I think it would be very, very fitting for Arsenal to do that. Like, for, not not just because of the, the, the passing of him. He was one hell of a footballer yeah. as well. Pe people. South London uh, Brazilian, mate. Yeah, he, he was special. He was special, like you know, what I mean, a special footballer. Um, you special know, person. Uh, and and. and I, I just think that it would be fantastic if Arsenal done something like that. So that, that would be for me. Uh, uh, Lee, I agree with you. Look, I, I know there's some other players who have iconic status as well. Yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, put them down in any way, shape or form. But this is Arsenal. And Rocky came through the ranks and became iconic. Yeah. That's the difference. You know, being bought is one thing. Coming through the ranks and becoming iconic as, a, as an Arsenal man, I say definitely Dave Rollcastle needs that statue. And I think it will, be, it will be welcomed by the majority of players, uh, uh, and, and players and fans, yeah, I think. Yeah, uh, I'll uh, 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 go along with that. Uh, there's a question by um, Red F 2020 Lee. What do you make of Roy Keane's comments about Arsenal last night? <laughs> I'm not going to argue with him. <laughs> no, I'll go on this one. Go on I'll go on, go on this on one. I, I think it's a bit of tongue-in-cheek by yeah. Roy Keane. I think what we, as Arsenal fans, we're going to be very protective of Arsenal and what, what happened regarding Lacazette scoring and uh, Ozil scoring. Look, it's been such a long time. You know, they sh I'm not surprised they weren't doing cartwheels because... It's been such a long time since Lacazette scored. It's been such a long time since Erzul scored and a 4-0 win and that feel-good factor. Maybe they got a little bit carried away. But I, I understand what Roy Keane is trying to say because it's Newcastle at home and as a, as a club, you ain't actually doing the business. You haven't been doing no, the I business. I get what that is. And, and, and yeah. you, you shouldn't be celebrating like that in his head. I can understand it in his head. You shouldn't be celebrating like that when you've actually, you've actually under, you've actually underperformed. Yeah. You're, you're underperforming, to be honest. So I get that. But do you know what? I also get, I get relief. I think there's a bit, a bit of relief element in the way they celebrated. I, I think when Lacazette scored and everybody came to him, I love that because. The, the team are showing their, their yeah, I'm, you know, I'm with their you passion on that. for him. I think it's really important. Yeah, I'm with you on that. You know, and, and look, yeah, we ain't where we were in yesteryear. I understand that, but do you know, we've got to take what we're, we're given yeah, sometimes. We've got to start somewhere. We've got to start somewhere, and you know, if this is the route back, hey, let's have many more celebrations. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, as a fan, I, I like to see it. I like, you know, I mean, it's all about scoring goals. Yeah. You know, and we get a lot of them taken away because of VAR. So let's enjoy them when we get them. Like, Definitely. You know? Definitely. Um, 
let's have a look at the next batch. J Jason Cross asks a great question, Lee. Do you want to read that? Best midfield now of all the players are performing well. What was it being our this best is midfield? At Crossy 70. Um, I think the best midfield, if I'm really brutally honest with you, with everybody playing well, with everybody playing well, well. is going to be Xhaka, Torreira, and Ozil. Because they're the, they're the incumbents who play the most games. So when everybody's playing and everybody's playing well, they're the ones who are going to get, get the shirt, I believe. But I also believe there's a case to the way Sabayas played that he plays because Ozil looked a different player with him there, with him feeding those yeah. balls in between. So, you know, then do you say, is it um, Sabayas and Torreira? Is it Sabayas, Jacka and Ozil? You know, the permutations, but that would be my permutation for now. It would be Xhaka, Torreira and Ozil. I'd like to see that with Jack Grealish in it. <laughs> but I'm, uh, I'm going to, I, I, I feel Xhaka off. Do you know what? We were talking about this the other day, like people were saying, oh, I stick up for Xhaka a lot. Yeah, you do. Like, I do, you know what I mean? Like, you do. But, I do. <laughs> but he has turned it around. It's been amazing he's been turn around. He's definitely been better. You know what I mean? Definitely. I'm not saying that he's, the man's going to take us to this and that, but I think it's been a marvellous turnaround. So I think he has been probably since... Arteta's come into the team has been probably our best consistent player. most consistent so he would definitely get in there like I, I, I am going to I'm going to change it a little bit and go with Sabias I think like instead of who instead of Torreira I think that um, <laughs> yeah I'm going to uh, no Torreira I, do you know what mm. it's <laughs> Surprising. Yeah, I, I, you know I, I've got to put Torreira but then I've got to leave Ozil out and, I, and if Ozil plays like he did Sunday, this is what my but he only played is. like that with Sabias there. Yeah, so, like, so if you know, Sabias plays, fair enough. Fair, yeah, so uh, if, yeah, so if Torreira plays, I'll probably go. Sabias. I'm going to go with the midfield three that played on um, Sunday. on Sunday because to be honest, since we've been this season, that's the best I've seen our midfield play this season uh, in a creative yeah. point of view, and it also kept a clean sheet as well. Yeah, true. So that that would be my three. But I, I still think, just to add to that, I, I still think they lacked, uh, in the first half especially, they were driving through our midfield and I, I don't like that. I yeah, don't I, like, I don't like that. Almiron picked it up one time and he just went straight through the through. middle. I, I hate seeing that. If you're going to go, if you're going to get past us, go down the wings. Yeah. But when he goes straight down the middle, that, that brings alarm bells for me. And I'll be, I'll be honest, I'll be honest, if we're to get to where we want to go, then, then none of them will be in there. Right, so it's just so the best like, of, just, a, of just, the bunch, yeah, 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 bunch. The if we want to get to, to, to where Liverpool are and that, none of them would be... Yeah, and that's, there's, that's not enough, there's not enough, there's not... Yeah, we have to be ruthless. Yeah. Uh, next question is from NB Blurks. And his question is, do you think Lacazette will still be first choice number nine next season? If not, will he be replaced by players already at the club or will the club buy a new number, number nine. nine? That is a really, really good question. Hey, you've got three questions in on one, but, but we're, we're, that is a really good question. Do you think Lacazette will be the first choice number nine next season? Lee, no. do you think so? No. Uh, no. I don't either. No. I honestly don't think so. I think the fact that their contracts are running out. I don't think Aubameyang will be in next year, no. I think the contracts are running out and they're going to get to a year without signing and I think they're going to have to sell them. Mm. So, answer to your question, MB Blurks, about Lacazette being first choice number nine, no, I don't think he will. I think that offers up the opportunity for Aubameyang or Martinelli, um, who is obviously at the club now. He's already in double figures and he's definitely one for now in the future. Yeah. He's only going to get better. He's only going to get better and or will the club buy a new number nine? I can't see it. I think Arsenal have re requirements in other positions that are going to eat up the transfer budget, whatever that budget is. I don't think we're going to have a very big budget. And I think Arteta's going to have to work with what he's got. Uh, I, I think if, if they were to sell a Bamiang, they will bring some, uh, they'd have to bring somebody in. If they can... Uh, listen... You know, if we can get get the players in, you know, maybe we can convince Aubameyang to stay. But I think 
if I'll be honest, one of them will have to go. One, one left. One will have to go. And, and I, I think Lacazette's think Lacazette. less productive yeah. right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, Lacazette's less productive. Yeah. Uh, so I think we're going to go to the last one. It's Talking Ass Blog. Um, says, do you think we can qualify for the Champions League? Now Chelsea have imploded and City have been held up for cheating. <laughs> <laughs> no, ban, I like that. Ban That's City, a, they call it. Yeah, yeah, ban, yeah City. ban City. Go on, ban City. Uh, do you think, Lee, we can qualify? Because there's not a lot There's not a lot in it. If you, you go on a little run of, and get some wins under your belt. This, this is the problem with Arsenal fans. And, and does it open up fifth? It does open up fifth. But this is the problem with Arsenal fans, which people will ever get. That we've won one game against Newcastle and all of a sudden it's Champions League football. It's, you know... Let's take calm, a breath it, calm, calm down, down calm, calm down, down, down. A bit like. oh, What I will say, and I, I think that our next three games are, you know, we've got Everton, West Ham at home, and then Brighton away, I think, in the next three games. Now, if we get nine points from those three games, mm -hmm. then ask me that question again. And I'll How be about seven? About that. No, it's got to be nine. I think because at the end of the, the end, we've got to make ground. You know, Chelsea and Spurs are playing each other this week. So we can make ground. So we're going to make ground. So we've got. No, to could make ground. It's going to be a tough one against. Yes, yes, against yeah. Everton. It's not going to be easy. Yeah, that's Tell true. You. Like, yeah, it's going to no, be tough. No, it's going to be tough. But like, if I'm talking about if we're going to get there, we've yeah. got to. So we've take got to nine make, points. We've got to take nine points because also don't forget at this moment in time, Everton are above us. Yes. So we need to take them out of the, yeah, out of the equation. equation. Yeah. Uh, or then we need to go on to Sheffield United, Wolves, and then then down the road but there's a chance you know what I mean but I don't think that if we we drop any more points at home because we have got three or oh, two real hmm, tough away games at, at Band City mm -hmm. and um, and you're loving that aren't uh, you? I think like that Band <laughs> City we we'll say that and uh, them down the road that's yes. two tough away games Liverpool at home now if things go our way in the Europa League, that game comes in between the semi-final. So we'd have the semi-final first leg and... Uh, the midweek yeah, game and then... then the, yeah, so, so, sorry, the weekend and then the yeah. other week. So the Liverpool return. game would be, a, you know, in between that. So that could be a real, you know... But I'm getting ahead of myself here again, you know. But three... I, I think... I know it's the old cliche. I've got to take one. But we've got to win those, those three games to see where we are from here. But Lee, answer the question. Do you think we can qualify... Yes or no? Do I think... <laughs> no, no, I don't think that we... I, I think we give ourselves too much to do, if, right. I, if I'm honest. OK. But I, I have hope. Talking ass blog, I'm going to answer that. Of course we can do it. <laughs> of course we can. Look, this two-week break in Dubai, I think, is going to help Arteta moving forward. We're going to hopefully turn them, diff, them draws into wins. Into wins. You get a few back-to-back -back wins under your, your belt. And I'm not saying... I know the Everton game's going to be a tough game, but when you're at home, you've got to win your home yeah, games. Yeah. Can Arsenal go on a, a run of three or four wins? If we get 12 points in the next four games, or, or even 10, I think you're right up there. And, and now that fifth spot has become special. Yeah. Because with, obviously, Man City being banned, this opens up that fifth spot. Can Arsenal get fifth? I think Arsenal can. But we need to go on a run. So can we do it? Yes, we can. So Kev, Lee, Kev knows. Kev knows. Well, listen, I, I just know, if, as long as it's mathematically possible... There's a chance. There's a chance. And you've already written it off. So there you go. <laughs> this is Mr. Arsenal here. Anyway, look, everyone, thank, thanks for your, your comments and your... Uh, and just supporting us, to be honest. Yeah. Because... We've got fantastic feedback from all this, haven't we? You the, know. The, the feedback we get is amazing. Yeah. Thanks for all your comments. Uh, again, we're probably going to see you again in a couple of weeks' time, yep. uh, fortnight's time. And please keep leaving your, your messages and your, and your comments because we're going to quite do this on a regular now. We always tell you to leave it and we never really address it, but we're going to do it now, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. We're going to make this quite a regular feature because some really good questions get asked. So, listen, see you in a couple of weeks. It's goodbye from me. A good night from me, Lee Judges. Take care and see you in a fortnight's time. Come on, you gunners. <laughs>